Good morning ladies and gentlemen, my name is Napoleon Total, and today we're back with another Enlisted News of the Week in which we covered the Enlisted News of this week. And this week we only have one thing, but it's one of the most important things that I'll ever get to cover on Enlisted because this is time we're going to be doing the Pacific Levels. Yes, Enlisted has pretty much released all the Pacific Levels for us to see. But that said, without further ado, if you haven't liked, subscribe, or joined the Discord, I highly suggest that you do. And today let's get started with the Enlisted News of the Week. So the first and only thing that we have are the Pacific levels. The Battle of the Pacific greets you with a lot of new weapons, equipment, and squads. There are 26 levels for both the new Japanese army and the US, of which the US have actually some familiar weapons, but in which we're gonna see later on. Now in level 1, the Americans are gonna get the M1900 Spring Springfield, the Springfield 1903A1 as the USMC, uh, and the M13 MGMC as their mobile SPAG, and the Springfield M1903A3 Springfield, which is the sniper rifle. For the Japanese, we have the Type 38 Arasaka Carbine, the Type 38 Rifle, the Tasa SPG, and the Type 97 Sniper Rifle, of which I think the edge here actually goes to the Tasa, considering that the fact that it has a 20mm cannon, and the cannon fires very fast, while the American has two 12.7 Browning machine guns. The Tasa should be able to take out light tanks, along with some infantry, and the mobile SPAG, the MGMC for the Americans, doesn't really have the potential to take out enemy tanks, although I could be completely wrong. Next, we have level 2, and that is the Americans getting the M50 Rising, and this is a mid-accurate and rapid-fire machine gun used by the US Marines, quite a flexible example due to its switch mo mode switch. And for the Japanese, we have the M1 100, and this is the Austrian version of the MP34 SMG. An interesting thing about the S1 100 is the fact that it can actually mount a bayonet on the SMG, so that's actually a very interesting thing. I don't know if they're actually going to put a bayonet on the S1 100, but on the Type 99 and in, in the art that we got, we did see a bayonet on the Type 100 SMG, so I'm pretty sure that they could potentially add a bayonet on the Type 1 100. After that, we have the another rifles, and that's level 3. We have the Enfield P14 and the Type 1 rifle, both of which are just bolt action rifles. I really don't know which one you would rather prefer. I would honestly say both are pretty good. The Enfield MP14 is quite good, um, looks more like the Ross rifle, and I will have to say the edge goes for the Americans. Next on level 4, we have the Hydroplanes, and I'm actually quite happy that Enlisted has added this because one, I, I actually suggested something similar, and as you can see for the rest of this video a lot of the suggestions that I put out they've actually listened to and they've actually done some of my stuff with the planes tanks and stuff like that meaning that some of the videos that I've done for progression tree suggestions they've actually listened to so for the Japanese we have the Ashi E13A1 this is a hydroplane able to land safely on water light maneuverable but lacks frontal armament However, it's protected by a rear gunner, so that's going to be interesting, and it carries four 60kg bombs. The SOC-1 is a hydroplane, more compact than its Japanese contemporary, and comes with a frontal 7.7 machine gun, in addition to the defensive machine gun in the rear. The SOC is slower, however, can carry two 100-pound bombs. Now, if you're going to ask me which one wins, I would have to say they're quite even. Now, being more maneuverable and carrying slightly more bombs is going to be interesting. So, I would actually have to say the Ashi wins in this one, only slightly. After that, we have the anti-tank rifles, and that's at level 5. We have the boys' anti-tank rifle and the Type 97 anti-tank rifle. The Type 97 anti-tank rifle is basically a copy of the boys' anti-tank rifle with a frontal shield, so that's going to make shooting the gunner a lot harder. And at level 6 we have the big boys, and that is going to be the M3 submachine gun for the Americans, and for the Japanese we have the Type 100 SMG, and this is the early version, and the difference between the early and the late version is that the early version fires slower, whereas the late version fires faster, of which the late version isn't in this campaign, at least not yet, and from my history and from my speculation, it shouldn't be here until late 1944. After that, we have the mortars, and that's coming in level 8. For the Americans, we have the 2-inch mortar, same as in Tunisia and Normandy. And for the Japanese, we have the Type 89 mortar. This is a very compact and lightweight infantry mortar, 
the range and power of the 50 grand load is equivalent to that of a full size com contemporaries, and the ammunition contains an extremely troublesome explosions for the enemy. Now, this very can be used on the knee, and this is the definition of a knee mortar, so I don't know really if this thing can be used like a noob tube. In which I actually hope that the Japanese do get a mortar that can be fired via the knee, so to see if they can be properly used. And the 10 rounds is extremely troublesome, like I said, it's very very good. After that we have the Americans, uh, the tanks, and for the Americans we have the M2A4. This is a further development of the M2 with the 37mm gun, whereas the M2A4 stands out with a solid platform of all equal all around armor, even can withstand rounds from anti-tank rifles. For the Japanese we have the Hago, this is a very light vehicle with bulletproof armor, and when I mean bulletproof armor, it really does have bulletproof armor. The thing literally does not have any heavy armor against a 37mm gun, so uh, anything above a machine gun can literally penetrate this. The 37mm gun is a very very fast firing weapon, and it has two machine guns, one in the back and one in the front. Of which the front one is very more is more useful, whereas the back one I don't really know how useful it is. After that, for the Americans we have the M1 carbine. This is the exact same M1 carbine that you see in Tunisia and Normandy. And for the Japanese we have the Hiei rifle. While this is the early production of one of the first Japanese semi-automatic rifles, it saw limited production for testing and it was scrapped after that. It was in one of my videos for the suggestions for the Japanese gold order weapons and it is here so I'm pretty happy that Enlisted has listened. The interesting thing is that this version gets the 5 round and instead of the 10 rounds, which I would have to say given the level and this is level 10, I will say that's pretty pretty um, balanced. But after that, it does have a quick reload, and it has good, relatively good sights, and it has a bayonet from what I've been seeing in the art. After that, we have level 11, and this is where things get interesting. And for one, the Americans get a 5 round shotgun, and this is the Browning Auto 5, and this can be given to assaulters, and this can be used as a secondary slot. So basically, a 5 round shotgun that can be used as a se secondary slot. And it's actually quite good. Now for the Japanese, we have something way different, and that is the katana. Now this is a true warrior's weapon, burst into enemy lines and put all your strength in one decisive blow. This can be given to any soldier in your army. Now, really comes down to is which one is better, the Browning Auto 5 or the katana? Now for the swords, I'm assuming that they're going to be giving them the extra run speed, which is really, really important if you want to be darting around the map. And the Browning Auto 5, I willing to bet that this thing does not have the run speed, but from what I've been inclined to, the Browning Auto 5 can be only given to assaulters, while the Katana can be given to essentially everyone. So it really comes down to you, are you going to be really using assaulter for the allies, in which you might as well just do, and for the Japanese you're just going to be having troops that can run around. Obviously both sides have their own specialities, in close quarters engagement, the Browning Auto 5 obviously wins compared to a Katana, unless you can come from a side with a Katana, which, let's be honest, you're more likely going to get mowed down by enemy infantry before you even get into Katana range, but the Katana can make you run really fast, so one basically is more firepower, one is more speed, which I believe it's a pretty good addition. After that we have the F2A3, and this is the Ameri American Carrier, and this is a straight line maneuverable too, in terms of weapon rate it can carry two 100 pound bombs and four frontal 12.7 Browning machine guns. So that's going to be very interesting. Also, the A5M4 will be added at level 12 too, and this is the first carrier-based monoplane in the world for the Japanese, so that's going to be very, very, very interesting. After that, we have the M1 Grand for the Americans and the Type 99 Rifle. Obviously, the M1 Grand is going to win. The Type 99 Rifle, and this time it's the late version, is not going to be going so well against the M1 Grand, but yeah. Uh, I would choose the M1 Grand. After that, at level 14, we have the Flamethrowers, and for the Americans, we have the M1A1 Flamethrower, and for the Japanese, we have the Type 93 Flamethrower, and this one was used by the Imperial Japanese Navy for raiding trenches with a range about 18 meters and has enormous damage. It excels in confined places, so honestly, I don't know about the latter two, of which uh, the Type 3 Flamethrower, the Type 93 Flamethrower, isn't really used in history compared to the M1A1, of course. So, I really don't know. Um, my guess is that both are quite even. 
But that said, let's move on to level 15, and that is where we get the next batch of SMGs. And for this time, the Americans get the Owens gun, and this is an Australian submachine gun with very high rate of fire and controllable recoil. And the only issue is the sights. The sights are quite unusual, considering that the magazine, like the Bren and the Vickers, is right in your face. It goes up, and that's gonna be quite an issue if you're because it does block your view. For the Japanese, we have the MP28. This time, it's chambered at 7.62. So, honestly, uh, MP28 modification that uses 7.62, which would I get, the MP28 or the Type 100 early version? I would have to say that I have to do some testing in-game to see which one's better, but the Americans get a pretty good solid down-the-line progression. They first get the Rising, and then after that, they get the M3 Reese gun, and now they have the Owens gun, in which, yeah, the Americans don't really have an issue. And the Japanese, I really do have to do some testing between the MP28 7.9, 7.62, and the Type 100 SMG. After that, we have our CAS Bombers, and that is the SDB3, the same one that you have enlisted, and the DEA1 Achi. Now, this Achi is a lot more interesting considering the fact that the SDB3 has a larger bomb load, whereas the DEA1, the Jakes, is more maneuverable. So, honestly, depending on what you have, it's similar to the SBD3 and Stuka. After that, we have number 17, and that is the grenade launchers. This time, we have the Springfield M1903 with the grenade launcher, and for the Japanese, we have the Type 38 rifle with a grenade discharger of which the type 38 rifle grenade discharger is similar to the german grenade launcher and i really am looking forward to seeing both weapons in use considering that the m1903 grenade launcher is also first in game after that we have the sniper rifles and this time we have the springfield m1903 a4 for the americans and the type 99 sniper rifle now considering that the type 99 sniper rifle uses the 7.92 round I'm pretty sure that the Type 92 does slightly come on top, but the sights are going to be the real issue. Both sides, sights are going to be quite bad, so that's going to be not that interesting. That said, um, sniper rifles can be useful considering the map, and yeah, that's going to be that. Obviously, I haven't played the map enough, and since the map isn't even out yet, so I'm just suggesting that it might be useful. After that, we have level 19, and for the Americans, we have the P400, and this is the Aracobra, and this is a very good frontal armament and reliable armor, and compare that to the A6M2, this is the legendary Zero for the Japanese, and this comes with two 60kg bombs, although it has quote-unquote cannons, the cannons are basically upsized machine guns, considering that the fact that at this point in time, the Japanese will consider their machine guns on their planes as cannons, really. Um, I'm not making this up. Yeah, in terms of maneuverability, the A6M2 has the win, and the P400, the Aracobara, does have a lot more firepower, and I'm suggesting bombs from this case. But that said, um, really interesting matchup, the Zero versus the P4 Ar Aracobara. After that, we have the machine guns, and the Americans definitely come on top in this one. For the Americans, we have the Browning M1918 A2, and this is the obviously the upgrade to the Browning M1918. And for the Japanese, we have the Type 97 LMG. An interesting thing about the Type 97 is the Type 97 is actually used on tanks, and its forerunner, the Type 11 SMG, which is at level 7, is quite interesting considering the fact that the Type 11 uses uh, zipper clips for the magazine and they have to be clamped in, similar to the Breda Mod 30, but unlike the Breda Mod 30, it has a lot more clips to be smashed into the magazine. The Browning 1918 for both sides really come on top. I haven't used the um, Type 97 LMG and it's really mainly used for tanks, so I'm gonna take it for the Browning M1918A2 for the Americans, and honestly, if you're the Americans, the only really thing that you should be using is the Browning M1918A2, so that's gonna be interesting. For the Japanese, at this point, it looks like they're more really gonna be specializing with fast, fast planes, the rifles, and albeit the Americans have the M1 Grand at this point, so they really don't have that either. The, maybe the SMG department, but everything above that, they're mostly vehicles, and not in terms of ground vehicle, 
ground units in terms of weapons because the Americans had the Browning M1918A2, the Owens Mark I, so they're going to be having the advantage. But that said, let's move on to the next weapon, and those are going to be the M1 Bazooka and the Type 5 Rocket Launcher, of which both are quite interesting. I would have to say that the Type 5 Rocket Launcher is going to be better, not because I have used it, but because of speculation, and so uh, yeah. At level 22, we have the rifles, and this time we have the American Johnson M1941 for the direct upgrade for the M1 Grand. Now it has 10 round magazines, same as in Tunisia, but the recoil is slightly higher than the M1 Grand. And for the Japanese, we have the Otsu rifle, and this is a Japanese semi-automatic rifle with excellent, with excellent damage. And the interesting thing is that this thing is the exact copy or a copy of the ZH-29, of which if we're gonna put that into perspective, yeah, I, I guess the ZH-29 wins above the Johnson M1941. Not by much, but just by a little. At level 23, we have the tanks again, and that is the M3 Stewart and the Kini. Um, of the tanks, I'd say the Kini wins, depending on what the Stewart gets, but I'm more inclined to the Kini. At level 24, we have the flamethrowers again, and for the Americans, we have the M2 flamethrower, and the Japanese, we have the M100 flamethrower, so the Type 100 flamethrower, the Type 100 flamethrower, obviously, I don't know which one is better. I'm inclined to see the Japanese flamethrower be better, but that's that. And at, finally, at level 25, we have the big game changer. Now, we have the M1A1 Thompson. This is an American SMG with a good rate of fire. And for the Japanese, we have the Type 2A SMG. This is an experimental submachine gun of unused design, and is mostly effective at short range, and it has a very useful slow fire mode, which is highly recommended. Now, the second they say this, my first reaction is, does it have a very high fire rate? And from history, I guess it has a quite good fire rate, albeit uh, nothing in the files have confirmed to show that the Type 2A SMG is very, very uncontrollable. Of which, I really hope that the advantage is given to the Japanese, because as you can see from the previous stuff, the besides the Type 100, which is still a question, the Owens gun, which is actually in the game files and I've tested the thing, is actually quite good, and I really hope that the Type 2 and the M1A1 are balanced. Now finally, we have the light machine guns again, and this time we have the 20, level 26, and this is the Johnson 1941 MG. And this is a continuation of the Johnson Rifles, this time is an LMG, and this LMG was actually widely used by the Americans compared to the um, other weapons that the Americans might have, like the M50 Rising. But for the Japanese, we have an even more widely used weapon, and that is the Type 96 LMG, and a machine gun that's used throughout the war. Now, which one would I suggest? I would have to say that the advantage still goes to the Americans with the Johnson 1941 LMG, because the Type 99 LMG has somewhat of a slower fire rate as compared to the Johnson, whereas the Johnson has a good fire rate. Honestly, would I choose the Johnson over the Browning? No, I would still use the Browning, because one, the Browning has a good fire rate, but... That's that. Um, the Johnson, I haven't tested the thing out yet, but Johnson has to really compete with the Browning M1918A2, and honestly, from the point of now, it looks like the Browning is slightly better. Obviously, that can change once the game is launched, but in terms of the Japanese overall, they tend to be suffering in heavy weapons, such as the machine gun, but they certainly make up for everything in terms of assault weapons, especially in the late game, I think. Uh, flamethrowers, tanks, weapons as in terms of guns and they're mainly focused towards speed whereas the americans are apparently more focused towards heavy firepower uh, this can be seen in their planes their tanks well most of their tanks and their uh, machine guns not to mention their bombers so that's that very very interesting progression i'm very looking forward to this as of right now, I don't really know which side has the clear advantage. Um, the, once again, the Japanese have the speed, the Americans have the heavy firepower. But in terms of everything, I think it's quite balanced actually, so that's pretty good. If you guys are going to be asking me, Napoleon, what campaign are you going to be playing? Uh, well, that's going to be obvious, I'm going to be playing as the Japanese because I've already pretty much done the Allies before. So yeah, that's that for the Pacific levels. And comment in the comments down below of what do you think for the Pacific levels. Do you think it's fair? Do you think it's fun? And what side are you going to be playing?
Just when I thought I was done with the Enlisted news of this week, apparently Enlisted has just released another thing and that is optimized and improved graphics. Once the Pacific update is released, Enlisted will welcome with you technical improvements and will improve vegetation, smoke effects, and all surfaces of water. Now, but before we tell you about the graphic improvements, we would like to go into some optimization that improve the usage of your CPU resources on all platforms. Not only will Enlisted be more beautiful, but also be more efficient. The new goal is 120 FPS, new generation of 60 FPS of the previous generation. Each player in the course manages a squad enlisted, so there are hundreds of soldiers in action at all times. In large scale battles, you'll see hundreds of characters shooting, flying, and driving at all times. Before we start the opening test, we know that a dynamic shooter requires high performance and response controls. From the very beginning, our primary goals was to give players good and dynamic gameplay without losing the impressive scale of the battles. That is why Enlisted was only released on PC and next generation consoles. At this time, the platforms support a pretty steady 60 FPS. Inspired by the successful launch, we have decided to expand the audience and improve the game on previous generation of consoles. This path will not only be an easy one to considering the fact that to reach even 30 FPS, we had to spend multiple months working on an optimized one. But as a result, the game arrived on platform in autumn of 2021. The requirements for the stable frame was strict, and we even limited some locations in which the performance was below the stable 3 SPS mark. Obviously, we need to do more, and we're working on it. After a year of steady optimized work, Enlisted is getting closer to the coveted 60 FPS mark on the previous generation of consoles, and the 120 FPS on all modern consoles in high performance mode. In this mode, our initial goal was to stable 60 FPS on the current generation, and 30 FPS on the previous generation, and which this obviously has already been successful. Part of what we have achieved in the Xbox series showed a stable of 120 plus FPS on the narrative 4K UHD, but we want to see the same performance on next generation consoles with no variable refresh rate. Basically what they're saying is that we're trying to basically increase the FPS, which is very good. One big question that I have is that the lag is still an issue. Um, I'm experiencing some lag here and there, but it's not noticeable. Hopefully, with the increased FPS, they either do it, they either make the lag better or worse. I hope they make the lag better in the sense that it won't be so laggier. And of course, players will also feel the benefits of the work that we've done because the optimization on PC also allows to extend the audience to the game, providing a game with a stable and comfortable FPS even on a weaker notebook PC. So I, I, it looks like they have actually done something towards the game, which is actually pretty good. Um, this, this is, in my opinion, going to make more players play the game and a lot more players interested in staying. After that, during the process, we wrote new, better profiling tools. A lot of game systems has been heavily redesigned in a lot of different ways. Same, the logics have moved the servers, same, the game client calculation and a number of systems have been redesigned, and many systems have been rewritten. So basically, a lot of changes to the FPS, a lot of changes to the graphics, very, very good. And now we have other variable refresh rates, improved vegetation, distant fog, improved water surfaces, reflections, all of these are very, very good. Water interactions, height maps on water surfaces, basically what's going on is that they're improving a lot of the graphics, which is very, very good. And they've also increased the FPS, which is also makes the situation even better, considering that the fact that new graphics and new stuff is going to make the game a lot faster, a lot smoother and the game is going to be a lot better looking, that, that is at least the hope. And knowing Enlisted and their, how big they are on the, essentially, the graphics, I'm pretty sure that they're doing it, doing, they're doing a good job. And for those that are wondering, yes, one of the reasons why I started to play Enlisted was because of the graphics. Enlisted graphics, once again, they're one of the best. But that said, I always like to see them improve. But that said, guys, that's all it for this week. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and join the Discord. What do you think of the Pacific levels? What do you think of the graphics? Comment in the comment section down below, and I'll see you in the next time. Now before you leave, I would like to thank you very much for watching this video. I would be honored if you could like and subscribe to the channel. Remember, more videos are coming out, so it is a good idea to click on that notification button. Anyways, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.